Dear friends, welcome to Dental Education Hub YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss about the morphology of permanent maxillary canine. So in this lecture, what we are going to cover, we will study the chronology uh, of development, means the age of eruption, root completion of the maxillary permanent canine. The number of this tooth in various tooth notation systems. And we will also discuss the landmarks that are present on the maxillary permanent canine. So the maxillary permanent canine, the classification, it begins at the age of four to five months. And the, the crown is completed by the age of six to seven years. The tooth it emerge into the oral cavity by the age of 11 to 12 years. And if you simply add plus two, so the root completion is around the age of 13 years. So now what will be the number of this tooth and various tooth notation systems? So this is the central incisor, lateral incisor and canine. So for the right maxillary canine, the number of this tooth is six. And for the left canine, the number of this tooth is 11 in the universal numbering system. Now, in the Palmer notation system, the number, numbers, they begin from the midline. One, two, three. So the number of this tooth for the right maxillary canine, the number is three, and there's a symbol. And this symbol indicate it is of the right side. For the left maxillary canine, the number is three, also three. The only difference is this shape it indicates it is a maxillary arch or the upper arch and it is of the left side so three and three now in the fdi notation system this is the maxillary canine of the right side and this is the maxillary canine of the left side three indicate the tooth number and one indicate the quadrant number. So the number is one three. One three mean one mean it is of the right side, and three is the tooth number. Similarly, two indicate the quadrant number. It is the left upper quadrant, and three indicate the tooth number. So the number is one three and two three. The maxillary canine. It is the third tooth from the midline. As you can see in this picture, canines, they are also known as the cornerstones of the dental arch. They are the most stable teeth in the dental arch, probably because of the shape of the tooth and it, is, it has the longest root in the dental arch. The basic function of a canine is tearing function. So the incisors, they have cutting function. The canines, they tear the food. And the premolars and molars, they have a grinding function. Now, let's discuss the important landmarks from the labial aspect of the tooth. The crown and the root of this tooth, it is narrower mesodistally as compared to the other maxillary anterior teeth. So, the mesodistal width of the crown and the root is less as compared to the uh, to the maxillary anterior especially the maxillary central incisor the cervical line this is the cervical line and it is convex and the convexity is towards the root apex so this is the mesial outline of the crown so let's write m over here so the mesial outline convex so this is the mesial outline and overall this mesial outline is convex the next outline this is the distal side and as you can see the distal outline is concave so this is the distal outline and you can see distal outline is this concave so this is the cusp tip this is the cusp tip of the tooth and the cusp tip, it is in line with the center of the root. So if we draw a line, so this cusp tip, 
is nearly in line with the center of the root is in line with the center of the root so the cusp tip it has it forms two slopes so there are two slopes this is one slope and this is another slope so this is the mesial side of the tooth and this is the distal side of the tooth so there are two slopes this slope from here from the cusp tip till here this is the mesial cuspal slope this is the mesial cuspal slope and again this slope is the is the distal cuspal slope is the distal cuspal slope so the mesial cuspal slope is shorter so the and i'm writing mcs mesial cuspal slope so the mesial cuspal slope it is shorter if you compare it with the distal cuspal slope dcs i'm writing just short terms for your convenience these are not the standard terms so always write full were a full statement uh, rather than these terms because these are not the standard terms for example m is usually in the tooth morphology m is usually used for the mesial so it is a kind of a standard term and d is a standard term but dcs or mcs mesial cuspal slope and distal cuspal slope dcs these are not the standard terms so always be careful so the me this is the mesial labial lobe middle labial lobe you can see this elevated area is the middle labial lobe and this middle labial lobe it show greater development as compared to the adjacent lobes so this area is raised and this area it forms a middle labial lobe and it forms a ridge basically so it is quite prominent in the maxillary canine so this is the root and the root it forms a curvature in the apical third so this portion is the apical third portion of the root so in the apical third portion of the root you can see a curvature towards the distal side now let's discuss uh, the important landmarks from the lingual aspect uh, one thing that I, for I forgot to tell you in the label aspect that the crown um, is roughly pentagonal in shape that you can see now in your on your screen so it is the crown is roughly five cornered as you can see in the uh, in, in now here on the screen i forgot to mention this point uh, when we were discussing the labial aspect so let's begin the lingual aspect now the lingual aspect it is basically the crown and the root they are narrower on the lingual side so because the crown and the root are narrower lingually, so you can see the part of the mesial side. So you can see part of the mesial side of the root and of the crown and the root, and some part of the mes of the. So you can see part of the tooth. Uh, so this is the cingulum. So this is the cingulum and the cingulum it is large and in some time it is pointed and it forms a cusp like structure so these are the marginal ridges and this ridge is the mesial marginal ridge this is the mesial side and this is the distal side so this ridge is the is the mesial marginal ridge and this ridge is the distal marginal ridge so the marginal ridges in the maxillary canine they are more well developed in addition to the marginal ridges within the lingual fossa there is an additional ridge that divides the lingual fossa into two halves so this is a lingual fossa and because of presence of this lingual ridge it the fossa it is divided into two halves and this lingual ridge it extends from the uh, single limb to till the cusp tip so this is the mesial 
and this is the distal lingual fossa end. So this is a mesial mesial lingual fossa, and this is the distal lingual fossa. From the mesial aspect, the outline of the crown it is wedge shaped. So it forms a wedge shaped outline. The labial outline. This is the labial outline, and the labial outline it is more convex as compared to the lingual outline, which is which is concave and then again convex so the root outline the root is conical and it terminates in a pointed apex in a bluntly pointed apex now from the distal aspect this is a common feature that the cervical line it exhibit less curvature so the curvature of the cervical line it is very less so this is the distal marginal ridge and the distal marginal ridge it is more heavier and irregular on the distal side as compared to the basal marginal ridge. So there is a developmental depression on the root surface. When you see the models, you will see a developmental depression, and on the developmental depression on the distal side, this developmental depression over here it is more pronounced. So this is how you can also identify the distal side from the mesial side. Now, from the incisal aspect, uh, there is greater labiolingual uh, dimension as compared to the mesiodistal dimension. So, this dimension, this is the labial side and this is the lingual side, Li. So, this dimension, it is more as compared to the mesiodistal dimension. So this dimension, it is comparatively, it is less. This is the labial lobe and it forms a ridge and this ridge is also very prominent. The cingulum, this is the cingulum and this cingulum, it is more offset or it is more towards the distal side. So if you see over here, the cingulum, this is the cingulum and this cingulum, it is more present towards the distal side so overall the shape of the crown uh, from the incisal aspect it is more a, like a diamond shape um, like it has a more diamond shape shape kind of appearance from the incisal aspect so thank you very much for watching this video if you like this video please give us a thumbs up and do give us your feedback in the comments if you have any question, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. Again, thank you very much for watching and stay blessed.